All right, we just got done talking to Josh Hammer. I want to bring in the full panel here to, uh, you know what, I want to get your thoughts on all of the Trump situation. Eric July, Blaze TV contributor and founder of Ripiverse Comics, and John Doyle, Blaze TV contributor and host of Heck Off Kami, who I notice is wearing a very red hat. Who it feels it's, good. Does it? I haven't had this on in forever. And it's so crazy to think people used to wear these in public. And, and now I'm walking around with this on today and people are looking at me like a leper. <laughs> and we're in Texas. Yeah. It's like, it's seen as such a, a like, just, I guess, deviation from what's expected behavior in public now because it's like, okay, even if you like Trump or like Republicans or whatever, you're supposed to keep it to yourself. Meanwhile, we have, like, you know, the press secretary celebrating the transgenderism and all this other stuff. So. Which we are going to get into in a yes. second. Well, I just, I, I want to, you know, before we really get into it, I would just like to point out John has his Make America Great Again hat. I also, just in honor of... Uh, Donald Trump wore my my favorite shirt that I have of any sort of Trump shirt, and it says the Moscow Project. Uh, it's a Venn diagram that says very legal and very cool, which of course uh, references one of my favorite Donald Trump tweets of all time, when he was talking about when they were looking into his Moscow, you know, the Moscow Project. He said, "Against all odds, I decide to run for president and continue to run my business. Very legal and very cool." <laughs> I just love it. I just love it. I love the man. And you know what? Now I love him more. Eric. Yeah, I think that's the thing about this whole indictment. Um, I was recently just talking about this on my channel, and it's just, I don't know, man. It almost feels like a setup because these people are inevitably going to make this man far more popular than he has ever been out of this. And it's almost like, is that the intention? Are they stupid enough to believe that? And then, I, then I, uh, you know, looking at certainly as DA, like maybe he is stupid enough to believe that this is this can only benefit them because they look at it like, well, we're much like the January 6th situation. We're punishing our ideological enemies, and therefore that's sending a message. And that's all this is. Uh, this was ever about would be hush money and all. It's just about sending sending a message. Is really not anything. I mean, let's say this. Certainly in New York, a lot of those politicians have uh, done a lot of uh, let's say criminal acts that they've not been indicted for mm. but understanding what's on the line if they can get people like john doyle incriminated in any kind of way that's what it is that they're going to do i'm interested to see the response i know DeSantis said was it yesterday mm -hmm. when he was like yeah we're not going to be helping you out with any sort of uh mm -hmm. condition or anything like that that which would ironically be uh directly against that what is it extradition act mm -hmm. which I'm all for because that would basically mean that he's sticking it to the feds. I'm all for that. Um, not working with other states. Let's treat them like nation states and just let them, let them stay in Florida and let it be a safe haven for them. Okay. I'd be far intrigued by that. But, it, but if the reports that we're getting uh, are accurate, it, it seems that Trump is just going to, he just plans to surrender himself. Which I would expect him to do anyway. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? I, I don't expect by any means for him to be like, no, I'm just going to set up shopping. That would be pretty, that would that be pretty would be, badass, then, though. Then maybe I come in with the, the, the red hat uh, <laughs> at some point because I'm like, oh, somebody's sticking it to the feds, telling them to go screw themselves for the first time uh, in, in a while. So, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how these guys respond. I know it's going to, with at least with the conservatives or Republicans, rather it's kind of a touchy kind of subject. They kind of talk around it uh, but you know their hands are going to be forced now and I think a lot of people are going to draw their line in the sand based upon this I'm talking about people that generally support these Republicans mm -hmm. and they're going to be like look man doesn't matter if you like the guy or not we can all agree that this is screwed up and uh, let's let's act upon it so we'll see yeah I John you know it's you hear from we all know the left gaslights us right but you know I feel like epic proportions of gaslighting going on when you hear <clears throat> Alvin Bragg responding to, you know, the uh, the House committee saying that this is uh, attempted interference. Oh, interference. Now now we're worried about interfering, uh, attempted interference with an ongoing state criminal investigation. It's unprecedented and illegal incursion on New York's sovereign interests. So now all of a sudden they are concerned about interference into something all while like actively interfering with the next presidential election. Fascinating. And it's so true because they're not after Trump. 
They're after us, yeah. and Trump is just in the way. It's true. And, yeah, of course they don't care about the rule of law. I mean, New York, for example, I don't know exactly what the statistics are, but in the last, I think, since whatever the last uh, mayoral election or whatever, their crime rates, their violent crime rates have climbed significantly. Mm -hmm. And that same office, I would imagine, is ignoring things like that. And well, the DA of, especially you know, has done that. Uh, focusing on our, our president. So I'm looking forward to seeing what happens, though. I don't think it's going to help him in the general so much. Um, and that is because I think that there is something to be said about the way that most people are sheep. And the same way this isn't going to like wake everybody up because of that, you know, there are a lot of people who are just going to keep going about their day. But there are some people who could get it, and this is what it would take to kind of push them to that point. But in terms of the general, there are two ways to look at it. Like one, people are going to be like, oh, well, you know, they wouldn't have done this if there weren't something wrong. I'm not really going to look too much into it. I just passively hear this in the airport or at the gym or something This happened. Oh, crazy Trump. But then you've got people who might say, wait a minute, there might be something to this. Maybe he really is a threat. Maybe there is something to be said about the second we got an outsider into the White House, all of a sudden we're energy independent, we're not going to war, gas is cheaper. Wait, maybe things are like really like fake and rigged. But I think it's probably going to be the former just because I don't have a lot of confidence in like the agency of people. But I do think it will help them in the primary. And from there, if we can just kind of like keep the momentum going, I think that uh, it will be promising the gen in the general if it were a, leving, a level playing field, but unfortunately it's not. Well, I we do need to though ballot harvest while it, it is something that I, able to honest, do. I don't know. I think that the reason they're doing this is because they hate Trump and they want to just keep escalating and tell him, like, you need to stop, you need to stop. I think that they would literally do whatever it takes to make sure he never steps foot in the White House again and, like, interpret yeah. that literally, like, anything. I this agree. Is, I agree. They have no bottom. Um, all right. I want to shift gears here. And, uh, you know, again, this is... Uh, Day five after the shooting in Nashville where a transgender person took the lives of three innocent children and three innocent adults, uh, Joe Biden has released a presidential proclamation to, uh, now saying that transgender Americans shape our nation's soul. This is Transgender Day of Visibility. He says they're proudly serving in the military, curing deadly diseases, holding elected office, running thriving businesses, fighting for justice, raising families, and much more. And as kids, they deserve what every child deserves, uh, the chance to have their genitals mutilated. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. It doesn't say that in the statement there, but that is, of course, what he's pushing for. Uh, and they tweeted out, J B Joe Biden and Jill Biden tweeted out uh, on Transgender Day of Visibility, we want you to know that we see you just as you are, made in the image of God and deserving of dignity, respect, and support. Uh, we'll never stop working to create a world where you won't have to be brave to be yourself. Now, it's just really fascinating because we, John, you were here yesterday. We played Charlotte Clymer, mm -hmm. uh, which is a transgender uh, a biological male who sat there and said, God made me in her image. Um, God made me, God created me to be this. And it's like, uh, you guys have this very backwards because God knew exactly what he was doing when he created you to be that biological man or biological woman. Uh, so fascinating to see that they're now using this language that would somehow, you know, uh, insinuate that this is what God has wanted them to be. Now, I want to get your thoughts, guys, on the White House's embrace of this this trans movement, the same, the literal same week that a trans person murdered innocent people, innocent Christians, I would say. Um, but I first want to play KJP, the world's worst press secretary ever, uh, talking about the trans community being under attack. Watch. And one of the things that we saw during the midterm elections is that people don't want their freedoms to be taken. They want us to fight for their freedoms. And so it is shameful. It is disturbing, and uh, our hearts go out to uh, the, those the trans community as they are under attack right now. Mm, they're on. It, look, it's your fault. It's your fault, Eric. Well, that's what they did. I mean, yes. I, I've talked about this before about this community and how they kind of weaponize even doing harm to themselves, mm -hmm. uh, and they utilize that to basically say that you're a bad person. Like, so if you don't want the kid to sort of let's say, become a, if they're a girl, to become a boy, then they may off themselves or self-delete mm -hmm. or some, something of that nature, and therefore you need to validate everything it is that they're doing. So they're essentially weaponizing them doing something to themselves. And in this case, they do it. I've seen a whole lot of, man, just weird weird ways people are talking around this whole recent recent shooting. 
as if to say, like, well, it's because she had been faced with people, maybe in a discriminatory acts and all sorts of things, and obviously they blew up as if this is some sort of blowback of some sort. So, you know, it goes to show these guys, there's no, it's funny you said that before, no bottom with these guys. These guys are dirty mm -hmm. individuals. Them playing the God just goes to show how much they feel about your religion, certainly, certain uh, and foremost, that they will bastardize that. Hell, the only time they even refer to it is when they can try to use it against you. Mm -hmm. uh, they do that all the time. They'll talk talk down to Jesus on one side of their mouth, and on the other hand, it's like, hey, you know, you do something they don't like. Oh, that's not very Christian. Christian <laughs> of you. They love to certainly uh, do that sort of weird stuff. But man, they don't look. I need non-leftists to understand how dirty and rotten these cats are, and that they don't really play nice. But you see in the event that let's say there is an outlier that does something to people that is um, that fits the bill that they believe that they're supposed to be. Mm -hmm. And they will highlight that as, I mean, top to bottom, all the age, uh, alphabet, so CNNs, all that, they will all say all oh, was well, a right wing Christian uh, extremism and all that sort of stuff is, is going on. And the minute we have a pretty blatant and obvious case where someone went to Target which is, that'd be act effectively a hate crime. I, ironically, I don't see them talk, calling it uh, that by their own definition. That's what I'm saying. It's like it doesn't even exist. Yeah. And they're talking completely beyond that. So this is why I say stop playing nice with these idiots yeah. and stop expecting them to be held to the standards that you hold yourself and maybe your colleagues to, because that ain't the way that they play. I, I would imagine that our founding fathers are just rolling in their graves that they, you know, created this idea of uh, America and, you know, what they wanted it to be. And now you have the president of the United States declaring, you know, some trans day of visibility. Wait, wait, before you go, what visibility is he talking about? Did you see the GLAAD report? Well, they said like the CW, for example, had 15 percent of their mainstays and all of their shows were among the LGBT, whatever, yada, yada. Well, we can't get it. You guys are overrepresented in basically every form of media yeah. right now. What are you talking about? We see you. You're damn right we see you. <laughs> we, in fact, we wish we, would, we could see you a whole lot less, all right? <laughs> John. Yeah, the Founding Fathers, if they, like, went to CPAC even, they would probably start shooting. <laughs> they would be, like, very upset with the state. He's joking. I'm, like, That's a joke. Yeah, uh, yeah, that was a joke. Sorry, it wasn't funny, but it was a joke. Um, they, because just how far everything has gone to where even now, you know, conservatives are largely embracing a lot of this, like, social degeneracy and things like that that lead to things like transgenderism. And I think it's only going to get worse because, you know, it's one thing if you have a man who thinks that he's a woman. When you take a woman and start giving her testosterone, uh -huh. mm -hmm. you've got the, like, female brain that hasn't been built or socially conditioned to handle things like aggression the same way that like men experience mm -hmm. it because of hormones. And then, so you've got this like woman's body and you're just gonna make her like so much more aggressive, but right. she's already neurotic, she's already like emotionally governed. And then you see things like this. Mm -hmm. And it's just a way of capturing this identity that is already leading towards despair and then pointing at white Christians as, you know, the villain. And they've got their like friend enemy distinction down. I mean, that's why they didn't go to Wisconsin when the mostly white Christians were killed. That's why they don't go to Tennessee when the mostly white uh, Christians are killed. They refuse to even acknowledge it because they know whether or not they'll admit it that these are their enemies and their friends are the like transgender or Antifa or Black Lives Matter paramilitary people who will gun down their political opposition and then they'll just turn them blind die. Yeah. Um, one last thing before we have to go. The Trans Day of Vengeance that was planned for Saturday has now been canceled. Uh, they said this action will not be taking place Saturday due to a credible threat to life and safety. That's always what they say. The safety of our trans community is a first priority. This threat is the direct result of the flood of raw hatred directed towards the trans community after the Tennessee shooting. Gosh, I wonder why. Uh, individuals who had nothing to do with that heinous act have been subjected to highly serious threats and blamed only because of their uh, gender identity. And this is, of course, one of the steps in genocide. So they are always the victim, even when they are the ones who perpetrate the crimes. And you are always uh, the, the, the oppressor, right? Even though you're literally, I mean, let me just tell you, anytime we uh, have our people with my organization, Defend Our Kids Texas, make phone calls, urging establishments to have a uh, 18 and up restriction on their drag shows and they end up canceling it or making the restriction. It's always due to threats of safety. 
we can no longer do it. No one's threatening your safety. Like, literally no one's threatening your safety. You just want to say that so you can look like the victim again. If you like that clip, there is plenty more where that came from. Click the link in the description below to subscribe to the News and Why It Matters YouTube channel to watch the full episode.